presentation is going to be about uh, some of the approaches and technologies used to optimize blasting and crushing operations by monitoring fragmentation trends of buck in haul trucks. So um, just quickly, you I'm sure you know of our product line. We have our Whipfrag software. We have our Solo and Reflex systems for analyzing uh, uh, in real time in the product production plant and quarry settings. Um, Today, what I'm talking about really is a focus on the Reflex product, which is just for that, monitoring fragmentation of all trucks. Um, but to get started, I want to talk about something really briefly, which is an effect that it haunts all attempts at fragmentation analysis, the Brazil nut effect. It's more professionally known as granular convection. Uh, that's the fancy term for it, but I like Brazil nut effect. Because you've all seen this before in uh, mixed cereal and uh, mixed nut containers and things like that. The biggest stuff always rises to the top. It seems to contradict gravity and everything we know about gravity, but it is true. It's uh, sim similar to fluid convection, but like I said, you can easily see this in any of your uh, crackers and things like that that you open up. You always find the small crumbs at the bottom and the big chunks at the top. The same thing happens in fragmentation. So what this means when we try to monitor blast fragmentation, we have a couple different places we can do it. Um, at the blast, of course, when the material is first blasted, as soon as it's laying down, we can start to pull a drone over. We can use an aerial attempt to measure the fragmentation. Which is great about this, is it's easy to set up, it's highly repeatable, it's very affordable. You have very geographically linked data, but we have that Brazil nut effect that comes into place. You can only view the surface layer of the pile. Uh, the Brazil nut effect applies, and you can't really do the drone thing underground, so it limits you. Then there's terrestrial. It's the other way you can do it at the muck pile. Get people on the ground analyzing the muck. This is also very affordable. It also allows for smaller samples of muck, which gives you more resolution in your overall data. Um, but we can still only view the surface layer of the pile, or we need to come back and keep on analyzing as we are bucking, as we're digging into the pile. So that Brazil nut effect does apply again. There's another method we can do here, which is loading. While we're loading the trucks, we can try and analyze them up by the shovel pull. Well, this is interesting because it does give us smaller samples, but because we're looking at those samples, they're being collected, we still have the problem with the Brazil nut effect, the granular convection. All the big stuff sits at the top, all the small stuff slips to the bottom, and we only get a good idea of what the course is. We don't get any information about the mines. So here's another place we can do it, and this is what I really want to focus on here, is the trucks of muck. When we are hauling and when we are dumping, we can do fragmentation analysis very effectively. So while we're hauling, we can analyze the material from the top. This is great because we can see the material, we see if it's off spec, and we divert it somewhere else where it's not going to cause a problem for us. Um, you can install something like this in virtually in operation. You can move it around uh, throughout the life of the mine if you need to adjust it. It's a pretty portable uh, method. Um, but as the truck passes by or as the scoop tram passes by, whatever's carrying the, the buck, you're only going to see the surface layer of each load. You still have a smaller sample, so you're getting high resolution, but you're still going to get that effect, the Brazil nut effect. And then there's the dumping point, where we're tipping into a crusher, onto a belt, a chute, whatever. This is great because we can analyze the muck as it ravels out when it's dumped. This action, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about a little bit later in the presentation. This raveling action is very unique to the way haul trucks tip. The material rolls out in kind of sheets or sections, so we can actually take lots of pictures of it and get super high resolution data from just each sample at each truckload. Um, the only downside to this method is if you are dumping into the crusher, and you find out it's off spec, it's a little too late to do anything about it now because it's already in the crusher. So depending on your application, hauling or dumping might be the better point to do the analysis. So this is what our solution is. We have the reflex system. Um, this is gonna analyze material in real time without disrupting the production. And it's gonna apply to both of those hauling and dumping scenarios. You can apply it in both, you can use it in both cases. 
You can automate that process, establish quality control with continuous trends. You're improving your safety, efficiency, and throughput for low total cost of ownership. Of course, you're going to reduce maintenance, downtime, and energy consumption. Saving is always better. Um, and you can use this underground or on the surface. So it's a universal solution. Um, it will integrate with existing controls and any of your dispatch systems, so you'll be able to locate where each load came from in the operation, whether you're above or underground. And it doesn't just do trucks. We could do rail cars, scoop trams, etc. So it's the ultimate analysis system for vehicles. Um, just briefly on it, um, you know, we've put a lot of stuff into this to make sure that it will work in every location that we put it. Uh, but just some things I want to highlight most of all. Um, it's got a super wide power range, uh, super wide temperature range. It's super light, so you can easily apply it anywhere, even if it's a temporary rig or a permanent uh, operation. It's got very good ingress protection, so it's easy to clean, easy to maintain. It's not going to seize up with dust and, and whatnot. Um, and we've made it specifically versatile to mount right side up, upside down, on a wall, anywhere. So wherever it needs to go, on the back of the mine, on the top of the tower, it can go. And we've tested and proven it in very extreme industrial conditions. We know it'll outlast. So just an example here of where, like we talked about where we can put a reflex system. Post-blast fragmentation monitoring, that's what we're talking about today, but also primary pressure gap control, and pressure feed control, and more. This is just an example of the output. So you're gonna get full particle size and shape distribution, as well as color information, if that's what you're tracking. Or if you're really purpose focused, you have one thing that you really care about and that's all you want to monitor, then you can look at just oversized detection or just contamination or color. So this video here is just, again, another example of uh, the application. So you can see what we were talking about, both in hauling and dumping. So this first section is the hauling. So um, here we have, obviously, example for something that definitely doesn't belong there. It's way bigger than the rest of the stuff. We can easily see it on top, thanks to our Brazil nut effect, and we can convert it. In this case, the material looks good. We can send it on to the plant for processing. So like I said, really great if you need to stop bad stuff uh, early on from entering the process or segregate it early on. But if you need to do a little bit more in-depth analysis, then this is where we come to the dumping or tipping point, okay? There's the camera again. As the truck tips, we get tons of pictures of the material rolling out of it, and we see lots of the fragmentation data. We can take multiple samples during that process, okay? Um, here's an installation. You have the camera kind of, you can just see it in the one little yellow box up in the top, and there's the, one of the pictures coming out. So very high quality rock image. I can really pick out size fragmentation from that. That's a little older one, actually, but a little better one. It's a little newer. Here's another one. So you can, I tried to highlight the, you can't see the camera. I tried to highlight it in green for you there, but uh, the picture coming out of it, we have, uh, it looks a little yellow on the screen, but uh, <laughs> the picture coming out of it is high quality, sharp, easy to analyze for fragmentation. This is what I was talking about with taking multiple images as the material rolls out. We end up with all of these different stages and technically more if I increase the frequency of image. And so I can get a lot of pictures of even the stuff at the bottom of the truck, which is great. That raveling action, this is what you're seeing here. Okay, Really thorough and represent uh, representational uh, analysis. Um, just a, some news from a customer. Uh, Lafarge Wholesome finds the reflex to be a useful tool for monitoring and collecting data that is used to avail, evaluate excuse me, drill and blast performance. They've seen a 20% increase in pressure productivity and a 12% reduction in crushed product cost without increasing their drill and blast cost. So they've, they've made fundamental savings just by utilizing the data coming from the system in an intelligent way. So can you really optimize fragmentation? Last fragmentation? Absolutely. Some people think it's a myth. If you talk to the experts, they'll tell you it's possible. Continuous improvement of blasting operations is the most efficient way to save costs while improving your productivity throughout the entire operation. 
uh, this plan do check acts. You've seen similar things like this before. Fragmentation analysis is the check step, but ultimately the most important step is the act step, interpreting the data and taking action. So you can optimize fragmentation by altering your burden, your spacing, your full size, ignition sequence, ignition timing, powder factor, and more. Plus, you should talk to a blasting expert, someone who doesn't have a stake in the operation, somebody who doesn't work for your explosives manufacturer or something like that, get their opinion on what you can do to optimize your fragmentation. But they're gonna need data to work with first, okay? So following these steps will provide a huge return on investment for very small upfront costs and virtually no ongoing costs. That's key. But why? Why do we bother to optimize the fragmentation? Why do we bother to measure fragmentation? What's, what's, the, what's the big benefit here? No matter what, just by measuring it, you're going to improve your communication because you'll have visual and numerical data to back up what you're saying. There's no more, well, Fred said, it's, it's proof, we have it, we have the, the data. You can lower your cost by identifying the issues early, you become proactive instead of reactive, which is very key. You can increase your speed and efficiencies in coordination, planning, and throughput. You're optimizing safety, like we already said. You're eliminating downtime, keeping people away from dangerous locations in the mine, let machines do the analysis for you. Let the people do the important work with the data. And the bottom line is you're going to continuously improve your process with detailed data trends. You actually have the information because you cannot manage what you can't measure. So that's the quick uh, thing I wanted to drop off of you today to think about. Uh, but if you do want to talk more about it, uh, we're just over here at booth number eight. Um, and you can always contact us with the uh, stuff on screen there and uh, let us know if you have any questions or interest in the product or anything else we can help you with. The bottom line is if you need help with fragmentation analysis, optimization, continuous improvement, we've been doing it for a long time and we'd love to help you. Thanks.